Hello friends, I welcome you all in one more knowledgeable, interesting video. Today in this video, we're going to talk about a very, very important judgment of Honorable Supreme Court of India in the case of New Noble Educational Society. The appeal number is Civil Appeal Number 3795 of 2014 and the date of judgment is 19th of October 2022. Yes, today in this video, we're going to discuss about this judgment. Why this judgment is important? This judgment is critically important for schools, universities, educational institutions because these institu institutions claim exemptions under Section 1023C and there are some conditions, there are some riders, there are some um, provisos to the section those have to satisfy by these educational institutions. So this judgment is relevant, highly relevant for these institutions who are engaged in the activity of imparting education, right? So there are some observations of Supreme Court in this judgment, right? The judgment has been announced just before Diwali and I spent Diwali in reading this judgment and one more judgment is there on NGOs who are not for profit making businesses so we would be coming out soon with a video on that judgment also so let's proceed let's explore what the judgment of supreme court says the first point that is highly relevant is that the law declared in the present judgment shall operate prospectively right the general nature of supreme court judgment is not prospective it is retrospective in nature right because the supreme court do not lay down the new law. The Supreme Court, I would say, uh, clarifies or the Supreme Court explains what the law is and what the correct interpretation of the law is. So, the general applicability is retrospective, not prospective. But in this case, this law, not law, this judgment of the Supreme Court, whatever the, the Supreme Court judgment says is applicable prospectively, not retrospectively, meaning thereby, meaning thereby, the department cannot, cannot do rectifications on the basis of this Supreme Court judgment under section 154. So, lot many educational institutions got a big relief by this, that the, the, this Supreme Court judgment operates prospectively, not retrospectively. Now the next question is that why this judgment is announced as prospectively because there are few judgments which are available given by the high courts had different views on this. So whenever high courts have divergent views, right, different, different views and Supreme Court give altogether a different view, then in that case, the Supreme Court can write in the judgment that the this judgment operates prospectively, not retrospectively. So the important aspect is that, that, that the that the department cannot do rectification in the section 154 by taking support of this judgment. So the next relevant point is that it is held that the requirement, it is held that the requirement of the charitable institution, society or trust, etc to solely engage itself in education or educational activities and not engage in any activity of profit means that such institutions cannot have objects which are unrelated to education. In other words, all objects of the society, trust, etc. must relate to imparting education on or be in relation to educational activities. So the judgment of the Supreme Court says clearly that the objects of the education institution should be of only and only imparting education, not any other object, right? So the profit making should not be the sole object of the educational institution. Profit could be an incidental generation because of the main activity that is imparting education, but it should not be the sole activity. Next is where the objective of the institution appears to be profit oriented, then such institution would not be entitled to approval under section 1023C, right? At the time of evaluating application of registration by the income tax department of any educational institution who applied for registration under section 1023C, if the approving authority, right, uh, have uh, 
evaluated the application and have in mind that the institute or the educational body has been formed solely for the profit making purpose then that application can be denied then application can be rejected and registration can be denied at the same time where surplus accrues in a year or set of years per se it is not bar provided such surplus is generated in the course of providing education or educational activities it was a highly debatable point of section 1023 c because there are two important conditions mentioned in section 1023 c that the institution should be solely for educational purpose next is not for profit making purpose right so when we talk about the profit making purpose and when we see the financials of the educational institute it reflects that the institute is making profit so the approving authority take stand that the the educational institute is having surplus in the income and expenditure account so i am rejecting the application on the basis that there is a surplus institute is engaged into solely profit making activities not into imparting education so i am not giving the registration under section 1023 c right on this point of dispute honorable supreme court of india clarified that or just on the basis of surplus is there in the income and expenditure account you cannot reject the application because the surplus is the by product of the activity and there is no institution who who exist which do not have surplus because surplus is the thing by using that the development will happen in the institution in the educational institution so surplus is there right which is not a bar right which is not a problem in granting registration what the approving authority has to see is the objects and what the authority has to see is that whether the educational institution is imparting educational services educational is into the object of educational activities or not right if there is a surplus in the income and expenditure account then there will be no problem in getting the registration next is while considering applications for approval under section 1023 c the commissioner or other authority is not in any manner constrained from examining accounts and other related documents to see the pattern of income and expenditure it was also a highly debatable point that whenever um assc applies for the registration under section 1023 c to seek registration to seek approvals then department <coughs> keep on asking for the audited financial statements and reports and other documents and then the education institute says that you are not entitled to obtain or you are not authorized to obtain those documents right then because in law it says that you just only have to look into the objects right if the objects are fine if the objects are okay then you have to grant the registration but here honorable supreme court of india says that no if the department is of the opinion that the department have to see the documents have to see the financials then department can ask for those audited financial statements to check the genuinity of the educational institute and to check the flow of income and expenditure to check whether the educational institute was engaged in educational activities or not so it it is the purpose that Uh, department can ask for the audited financial statements and institute have to provide this it has also been clarified next is it is held that it is held that it is held that where registration of trust or charities is obligatory under the state or local laws the concerned trust society other institution etc seeking approval under section 1023 should also comply with the provisions of such state laws right in the in the uh, this in this judgment it, the local law applicable was uh, andhra pradesh charities act right if for example if your if your education institute is there in maharashtra it is there in rajasthan so if there are certain acts like rajasthan charities act or maharashtra charities act and your education institute also needs to mandatorily obtain registration under such local state acts then it is mandatory to obtain those registrations right if you do not obtain those registrations then your either application can be denied for registration or approval under section 1023c or your existing registrations can be cancelled because of this because you are not complying with the 
local laws, rules and regulations. The object or the logic behind is this is that the Supreme Court have to check the genuinity of the educational institute that whether the educational institute is genuine or not or complying with the local or state laws, regulations or not. Right. It was also a point of dispute that because in in Income Tax Act, it was nowhere written that uh, <clears throat> the local laws compliance is mandatory or compulsory in a plain language. So the Supreme Court has clarified this position as well that if any local law or state law is applicable to the educational institution, then educational institution also have to mandatorily obtain registrations under such local laws or local act. If educational institutions fails to do so, then the application can be rejected or the existing registrations can be cancelled on that ground. Next is the inter the inter Interpretation of education being the sole object of every trust or organization which seeks to propagate it. This is also one of the highly debatable issue that what is the actual meaning of sole educational activity, right? Supreme Court has clarified this in a very, in a very straight language that Supreme Court will not going to interpret it in the highly restrictive manner the activities which are very much incidental to the educational activities like transportation of the school children who studied in the school is also incidental right for example so educational activity is not restrictively defined by or uh, interpreted by honorable supreme court in this judgment supreme court says that the sole object of every trust or organization which seeks to propagate it through this decision accords with the constitutional understanding and what is more maintain its price time and unsullied in nature, right? Means whatever is covered in the wholesome bracket of education, including the incidental activities, right, which are important for imparting educational activities by the institutes, also covered in the definition of solely educational activities, right? So <clears throat> by reading the entire judgment, I, I inserted a point on this, my one note uh, uh, write up that any educational institution should avoid these activities, right? If you avoid these activities, then the chances of raising question by the department on your educational activity would be less your financials would be clear and uh, I would say the possibility of uh, uh, being plugged in the litigation or in the dispute from the departmental side would be very less, right? Avoiding conducting activities like these activities would be counted as a profit making business activity and preparation of separate books of account is also required for this because Department wants to levy tax on these activities, so separate books of accounts is required because the separate calculation of profit or surplus on these activities is required. Right. First is, for example, this is this is not the exhaustive list. These are the examples that I that I jotted here from my opinion that summer camp for outsider students. If a school in summer vacation conducted summer camp, that too for outsider students and charge some money, then it will not be a sole educational activity. Please mind this, right? You may have trouble in your existing registration as well as in seeking new registration if you conduct this activity. Transportation of outsider students. If you are using or deploying your school buses or college buses in transportation of student of some other schools because you want to you want to fully utilize your business assets or school assets, then it is advisable not to do that. Publi <coughs> publishing and selling any material in the open market, right? You should also not do this, not highly, not uh, directly connected with educational activities as well as incidental activity, hostel facility to outsider students, events like fair or mela, which allow entry ticket of outsiders. You are charging money from the outsiders and there is entry fees ticket for this, right? Giving school premises to outsiders for conducting workshops or seminars or tests. If you conduct workshops, seminars or tests for your own students in your own premises, then there will be no problem. 
if you give it on lease on or on rent to other educational institutions so that they can conduct their tests seminars workshops then then <clears throat> it is not an incidental activity directly connected with imparting education exhibition which allows exhibition which allows entry of outsiders and there is entry ticket for this this is also not allowed selling school dress or material from the school counters better it is better in my advice it is always better to outsource this to the local authorized shops getting sponsorship from advertisers in annual functions on annual meets right if you are a school is conducting annual function or annual meets and you are attracting sponsors so that the expense of the annual function or the annual meets can be bear by those sponsors this should also be avoided right because this is not the incidental activity in imparting education any other activity like having a a photoshop in uh, having a photocopy shop in the school and and that uh, is chargeable right so each activity should be first viewed from the angle of imparting education or its incidental activities whatever your educational activity your institute is doing or carrying out whether be it a school or a university a college right you should always have in mind that whether it is incidental in imparting educational activity yes or no so this is a very very interesting a very very knowledgeable judgment critically important for educational institutions like schools universities colleges right if you are already registered under section 1023 c this judgment is very very much relevant to you if you are planning to obtain registrations under section 1023c so that your schools or college get exemption and your gross annual receipts is exceeding 5 crores then also this judgment is highly highly relevant to you so thank you for watching this video if you really like this video click on the like button subscribe to the channel if you wish to have the complete judgment of honorable supreme court of india then please write your email id in the comment box we will forward you that judgment thank you for watching this video thanks a lot and one more thing if you have any query relating to this judgment or section 1023c or any other section of income tax act then you can post your query in the comment box comment section below we will try to reply to your query thank you for watching this video thanks a lot bye